going to talk to you about the different kinds of intuitive language because although intuition works from universal principles because each one of us because each one of us our nervous system is different and our own system is different it means that our intuition talks to us differently your intuition is going to be talking to you in a way that it's it's like your own personal language and depending on the way that your system works that kind of language well you know it tends to fall into one of nine different kinds of language if you like so I'm going to go through through what they are and have a listen and see if you can tell which kind of language that your intuition uses okay so let's get started so the first kind of intuition is the one that I suppose a lot of people are most familiar with or they've heard of, which is a gut feeling. And that is literally a gut feeling. So it's, it's in your gut. Now that means that your intuition is talking to you primarily through your body. So it's working through body sensations. Uh, so the, the term that sometimes is, is used for someone who's body uh, intuitive language is is literally a body language um is clear sentient so it means that their their clarity is talking to them through their sensory perception now the second kind of intuitive language is the other kind of feeling which is emotion so this is actually by being able to learn to speak emotions in, in many ways, in a similar way to the way that actors use emotions to communicate. Uh, you, your own system is using your emotions to communicate to you. You know, for example, uh, anger is simply communicating that whatever's happening is not what you want. Uh, if you're feeling anxious, it, you know, appropriate anxiety, I'm not, I'm not talking about phobias and things like that. With appropriate anxiety, it's actually a system saying, hey, you know, you're getting a bit off track here for, for what you want to create. So yes, the second kind of intuitive language that you could have is an emotional language. Now, the third kind of language is auditory. Now, in intuitive terms, someone whose intuitive language is more auditory, meaning you can hear your intuition, that is called being clairaudient, of course. So your clarity comes through your, your auditory sense or your sense of hearing. Now, uh, so that can come in simply, literally almost like, well, you know, as if someone was speaking to you. Uh, this doesn't mean that you're hearing voices. It just means that for you, your intuition is talking to you and it's giving you that information just in the same way as if you were hearing your own voice in your, your own head. Uh, and so it's learning to understand, of course, how to, how to interpret that. Now, the fourth uh, language is, a, again, an auditory language, except this time, instead of hearing words, you're, you're hearing other things. So you could be hearing you know, tones or music. Um, you could be hearing other diff different kinds of sounds. Now, those sounds, just like any language, it has a value, it has a symbolic value. So it's about learning to understand how your language is, is talking to you. Now, the fifth kind of language is a more visual language. So when you're visual, you're uh, you know, the term for that is, well, exactly that, clear visual, meaning that you're getting your clarity through the sense of your, your sight. And that um, can come again in a couple of different ways. So the sight that you can get is, it's almost like you get like symbols. So when uh, your your intuition is speaking to you, you may see almost like you're seeing with your mind or your brain rather than with your eyes, you, know, you may see different symbols. And if you think about it, our own written language is actually just a series of symbols, uh, except that when, you know, we're taught how to read those from a, from a young age. 
And so we don't really think about the fact that all those squiggles on the page are really just different symbols. Well, with our own personal language, we may have kind of like our own personal shorthand and the symbols that go along with that. Uh, of course, the, the sixth kind of language, which again is a visual language, it can be almost more like looking like a, looking at a video when we're looking at things that might have happened in the past or at, at a distance. Um, if you've ever watched the, the program Medium on, on television or some of the other um, you know, TV shows, that's often the one that they, that they represent, is that the, the, the person who is intuitive is actually getting almost like videos in their head about what's happening in you know, other times and places. Okay, so those, those first six, they're the most common ones in the way, in the sense that they're generally the ones that we talk about most, but there are a few others that are possibly less common, uh, but they're, they're just as valid. It just depends on your system. So the first one is actually getting intuitive information through your sense of smell. Uh, I've known a few people who do this. Um, you know, they, they actually almost, like one person uh, that I know can almost navigate by, by smell. Seems a bit strange, but um, you know, they're getting their, their clarity, they're getting information through their sense of smell. Um, and in the same way, uh, and the, the eighth language can be taste. So you, sometimes when people are getting strange tastes in their mouth, well, yeah, okay, sometimes that can be for a, for a health reason. But actually for some of us, uh, sometimes it can actually be your intuition talking to you. And of course, just like any of the other languages, it's about learning, well, what is our language and how does it talk to us? Uh, so if, if yours is actually taste, is actually understanding, well, yeah, is that because I've got some health thing going on? Is it because, you know, obviously if you're I don't know, chewing gum or you've just eaten something, well, that's where the taste comes from. But sometimes the, what you're tasting is actually your intuition talking to you. So it's about learning to be able to know when it's that and you know, when it's not your intuition. And then the ninth language, which is, as I said, with, with all of these different languages, it is, it's almost like you're sensing things really with your, with your brain or with your mind rather than with the sense. But the reason why we have that language is because your, your brain, your mind is presenting that information to you in a way that you can understand it, which is why it's coming through one of those different senses. So the ninth language it's actually not coming through the sense, it's sort of almost directly into your mind. And so that often is described as simply just knowing. Um, and it's not the same thing as sort of, there, there is a feeling around that. You know, sometimes it's described as, you know, hearing the sound, um, sorry, hearing the silence between the words. Because when it's your mind that just knows, there is this sense of almost space around it, is the best way I can describe it. Uh, and for many people, once they've worked with their intuitive language, we often start with just one. And so when you look at that list of intuitive languages, and uh, actually I'll put the, the whole list below for you. Um, well, when you look at that list, you may find that one or maybe even two really that you think that that is where that is how your intuition is talking to you well for many of us the more that we start to work with it the more that we start to understand it and be able to use it in uh, consistently well over time it's like we start to be able to speak speak <laughs> our intuition is able to communicate to us through almost through all of those so have a look at that list Decide uh, which one it's working for you, the, which language your intuition is talking to. Uh, if you would like to know more about that or work um, more with your intuition, of course, you can always pick up a copy of my book, The Soul's Brain, uh, The Neurology and Logic of Your Intuition. I'll, I'll put a link to that below as well. 
and just keep working with your intuition until it does become like a, a consistent language for you because then that is one of the major keys to unlocking your brilliance. So of course, between now and the next time, choose to be brilliant.